Game Ranks presents the 10 best new iOS and Android games of July 2015. We got paid games, we got free games, we just got a lot of mobile games, so let's get started with number 10. Operation Dracula is a ridiculous game and reminds me of those old late 80s, 90s Konami shooters kind of like Contra, but this one has more resemblance to a bullet hell style game. It's got an arcade style and it's a scrolling shooter with bullet hell influences. And if you can't tell with all the bullets and stuff flying around, this game is really, really difficult. That being said, the most fun part and the appeal of this game is playing more and more and getting better. Operation Dracula is a very cool, over the top and ridiculous experience with great visuals and an awesome kick ass soundtrack that you can listen to anytime you want. At number 9 we have Lines the Game. Lines the Game is a game where you kick back and enjoy on your iPad on the couch or something. It doesn't really require too much thought or brain power, but it's just fun and it's a little bit of a puzzle. It's hard to explain what Lines the Game actually is, but you kind of guide around paint as they fill in certain lines and you have to redirect them and make sure the various colored dots cover the spots in the pictures that they're supposed to. Yes, it's kind of like coloring and it's really relaxing and cool. It's pretty easy, but it's got that relaxing vibe similar to Zenbound. So if you're a fan of Zenbound or Zenbound 2, Lines the Game is probably worth checking out. At number 8 we have Adventures of Pip. Adventures of Pip got a big release on Steam, Wii U, Mac, and on mobile. Adventures of Pip is yet another pixel-based 32-bit side-scrolling action adventure game, but thankfully its underdog charm and gameplay mechanics really set it apart. Pip has three different forms and he can evolve and devolve to get across this fairly lengthy campaign. It's definitely worth checking out, but thankfully Adventures of Pip stands apart. At number 7 we have the Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet is pretty cool because you pay $3 and you get the entire game. There's no bullshit. There's no bullshit or freemium anything. And the coolest part is that it also feels like a late 90s action game. It's an action based top down twin stick shooter in which you play as Kali, the goddess of death, who runs around with two handguns and shoots all kinds of vampires, soldiers, gang members, and monsters and demons. It's got some story and some lore to it that you might care about, but the coolest thing is that it's 32 levels long. And these 32 levels come with cutscenes and dialogue. We highly recommend checking out Silver Bullet. At number 6, speaking of cool games with a late 90s influence, we have Impulse GP. Impulse GP is a racer heavily influenced by Wipeout. There aren't very many Wipeout-like games on iOS and Android, but thankfully this is one of them. And you can choose different control styles, but the default is with tilt controls. And thankfully it's one of the better controlling tilt games we've ever played. This game has great tracks, speed boosts, different bikes and upgrades, and it'll keep you busy for a long time with a classic feel, but still undeniably fresh and exciting gameplay. At number 5 we have Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle is sort of like a board game style color matching game that seems pretty boring on paper but thanks to a Dragon Ball Z style it makes it really fresh, fast paced and exciting. You fight Dragon Ball Z battles by matching colors and making certain moves with dice rolls. But the coolest part is that it's paired up with a bunch of Dragon Ball Z lore, production value, cutscenes and everything from everybody's favorite series. The game has tons of nostalgia and fan pleasing moments and it's free so for Dragon Ball Z fans it's probably worth checking out. At number 4 we have probably one of the weirdest games on this list called The Executive. Executive is a weird game where you run around and flame kick werewolves and do acrobatic stunts and run through a skyscraper smashing walls. It's a really fun side scrolling action game combined with the mechanics of an endless runner. It's really funny, wacky and over the top, pretty easy to play, pretty easy to play with one finger touch control and thankfully all the economy and freemium stuff is pretty unobtrusive. I've been playing this one for a while and it can also get pretty challenging so if you're up for it definitely check out The Executive. At number 3 we have Cloud Path from the developers Ketchup who have made a ton of awesome mobile games. Cloud Path is pretty simple because you just have a character that you have to move from left to right with perfect timing as blocks fall out of the sky. You need to keep moving forward because the blocks fall quicker and quicker the further you go. The game doesn't hold your hand and you'll start off getting your ass kicked as you figure it out. But thankfully that challenge is really addictive and you'll find yourself playing this free game a lot. It's got cool friendly cube based graphics and like I said it's really addictive and perfect for pick up and play. At number 2 we have Angry Birds 2. Yes, the Prodigal Son has returned with an official sequel to the first Angry Birds game. This is of course the 13th game in the Angry Birds line of games. But to justify it being called Angry Birds 2, Rovio has added a bunch of new features and completely different gameplay concepts to really make this feel like a sequel. Levels are now made up of multiple different screens in different sequences in which you have to manipulate the changing environment. There's all different sorts of things that redirect the bird that make the puzzles much more difficult. There's also a pretty inspired endless survival mode that you can play against other players and it's really interesting and probably one of the more unique Angry Birds experiences we've had yet. And at number one, we have Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Yeah, everybody has a different opinion about these series, but there's no denying that this is one of the biggest mobile releases this month. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is definitely a game that you're going to want to play with headphones because this one apparently uses sound to its advantage more than any other game in the series yet. And maybe you'll have a chance at getting spooked a little bit. Or maybe you don't find these games scary at all. I don't know. The best part is that Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is available for 3 bucks compared to 8 bucks on Steam. So if you're on a budget, the mobile version of Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is probably the cheapest way to experience it. 
We've also got a few other games to mention that couldn't make our list, such as Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, Prune, The Ridiculous Tofu Fury, Forsaken World Mobile, the very awesome and highly recommended Don't Starve Pocket Edition, and Champion of the Gods. So guys, those were the 10 best games coming out for iOS and Android this month. Of course, in the mobile market, tons of games release every day, so we want to know what you're playing this month. Let us know in the comments. Let's talk about some mobile games. And of course, if you like this video and maybe found a new game to enjoy, click the like button because it really helps us out. It's like giving us a tip. And if you're new, subscribing is the best thing you can do because we put out videos every single day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.